Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Thursday, the 12th day of September 2024. And as always, we have a number of very important stories to bring to you that give you the latest headlines of what's going on in the world with respect to fulfilling what the Bible says our world will be like at the time of the end of this age before the second coming of Jesus Christ and all the events that precede it. Now, in the headlines, which is fa which are fascinating, some 70% we find out of Hamas's weapons have been destroyed, 50% of their forces killed or wounded, a letter reveals. Uh, reports also, and this is a huge story here, that Israeli troops actually raided the weapons facility, the Iranian weapons facility in Syria. They removed equipment and documents before destroying it. And then along the same line, Hamas now, <clears throat> here's the latest. They said, we're ready to implement a ceasefire with Israel without new conditions from any party. Well, we will see. Same old, same old. But this is another headline, so we have to uh, list it for you. and We'll see what happens. All right. So as Gaza winds down, here's what's so fascinating. It is seriously looking like Israel will do something massive in Lebanon, hence the raid in Syria. All signs are pointing to it. At the same time, Iran is also in the crosshairs. So an increase in the fighting in these two areas should not surprise us. All in all, what we are seeing is the amazing fulfillment of the Bible's portrayal of how our world will look like in the time of the end, the last days, step by step. Now, we also want to make a correction from yesterday. Um, Timeless Truths looked at the book, Does the Bible Claim to Be the Word of God? Today, we look at the question, Is the Bible the Authority on All Matters? Now, what we have done here, we have 12 books on the subject of the Bible. We are recording for our Timeless Truths, a summary of each of the 12. I've recorded seven of them. Uh, today, the fourth one will be released, and hopefully I'll finish all 12 of them by today. And uh, basically, what we're doing is building a case, all right, where one book stands upon another. We start out with what everyone needs to know about the Bible, basic introduction, then Bible basics, what you need to know about the Christian faith and Christian theology. Then yesterday, well, just, okay, here's the question. Does the Bible claim to be the Word of God? Yes. And today we look at, is it the final authority? What we're going to do, we're continuing to build upon this, as we'll talk about the reliability of the text of the Bible. It says the same thing as originally written, the historical accuracy. We know the right books are in the Bible. Then finally, evidence for being it being a supernatural book, the Word of the Living God. Now, what we're doing this to instill confidence in you, our audience. In Luke 17, 5, the apostles said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. And we're attempting to do the same thing by looking at the totality of the evidence that God has given to us from the Bible. So we would like you to take advantage of it. You could, again, none of these um, t timeless truths are, are have to be read in any order at any particular time. You can start from the beginning if you have it, because it just lays out the explanation of each of the books. <clears throat> okay, one final thing, a housekeeping matter. Before we go into the uh, stories of today, if my voice is a little rasty, please give me a little bit of grace. The largest fire in the state of California is in the mountains right behind us, so we got a lot of smoke in, in our area here. Now, fortunately, the fire is moving the opposite direction out in the wilderness here, but it's burned uh, thousands upon thousands of acres here, and it's 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 quite nasty here, and so um, the breathing isn't the best. And so, again, if the voice is a little rastier than usual, please forgive me. Plus, it's, it's just five five in the morning right now, too, and I, I do get started early, and I'm all ready to rock and roll as soon as I wake up. But again, um, this will explain why if I might cough once or twice, uh, thank you for giving me the little bit of grace here, because I can actually smell the smoke through the open air window here. All right, let's get to it. <clears throat> Headline number one, 70% of Hamas's weapons have been destroyed, 50% of the forces killed or wounded, a letter reveals. Defense Minister Gallant presents a letter written by eliminated senior Hamas commander detailing the terrorist organization's losses in the war. Now, last night, Wednesday in Israel, he revealed a letter that was seized by a senior Hamas commander, and he and he read the contents of it. A man named Rafa Salama, who commanded Hamas's Khan Yunus Brigade and served as the deputy of Hamas military chief Mohammed Deef before both of them were eliminated in an airstrike in July, stated at that time, 70% of Hamas's weapons had been destroyed and half of its terrorist forces had been eliminated as of the writing of the letter. 
In the letter that Rafi Salama wrote, who was killed by us in July, uh, Gallant said, he wrote to the Sinwar brothers, he describes the situation then, 70% of the weapons destroyed, 95% of the rockets were destroyed, 50% of the terrorists killed or wounded, and a great many have fled, leaving them with 20%, according to him. And Gallant said, this is a real loss that hurts Hamas and is felt by its most senior commanders, he noted. He added, uh, he cries out for help from the Sinwar brothers, but of course they can't save him. Why? Because we are continuing the efforts that started in October and continue step by step by and reaches all until we get all senior Hamas officials. This is why he wrote to the Sinwar brothers who were still, who we will also reach. Now, that's a great story because what it's telling us is Israel is finishing up what they meant to finish up getting rid of the Hamas commanders, the, the weaponry, the army, and they've got still some work to do, get rid of Sinwar, catch him, eliminate him, and some of the other leaders. They're still going through these terrorist tunnels there. But this is encouraging. Now, the reason it's encouraging is because of what's going to happen next. And this is our next story here. As we've been saying, something needs to happen up north in the northern border of Israel and Lebanon. Well, get this story. Here's a report. Israeli troops raided the IRGC weapons facility in Syria. They removed equipment and documents before destroying it. Israeli special forces carried out a raid on an Iranian's weapons facility in Syria earlier this week, according to a number of unconfirmed reports. A series of alleged Israeli strikes hit the military sites in central Syria late on Sunday, killing at least 14 people and wounding 43 and sparking fires. Local Syrian media reported at the time that the strikes hit a scientific research center in Masyaf, which has long been associated with the manufacture of chemical weapons and precision missiles by the Syrian regime and Iranian forces. However, today's reports were the first to claim that there were Israeli troops on the ground during the operation. Hmm. The opposition Syria TV network said Israeli helicopters did not land on Syrian soil, but instead hovered as special forces repelled down ropes. The report said they were violent clashes in which a number of Syrians were killed and two to four Iranians were captured. The out outlet additionally says that a Russian communication center was among the sites targeted as part of the operation. Remember, Russia is there in Syria with its bases and its people uh, setting the stage for the future Ezekiel 38-39 invasion. Now, it's not not even the headlines yet. It's not even uh, on the horizon yet, but it is it is coming. All right. <clears throat> Channel 12 News cites research Eva J. Kulariotis, a well, long word there, who says that she was told by a security source that an IDF operation against the Islamic Republican Guard Corps, that's the IRGC facility for the development of ballistic missiles and drones, and which also provides logistical support for Hezbollah. It was an operation against them. She tweets that the roads surrounding the facilities were targeted with airstrikes to stop Syrian troops from reaching the area before the Israeli helicopters carrying special forces approached the area with air support from combat helicopters and drones. She says the Israeli troops entered the compound, removed the equipment and documents, and then laid explosives to destroy the facility. The U.S. government-owned al Hara network reports that the raid targeted several sites in the area there, and their intensity and death toll were quote-unquote unusual. Now, this is in Syria, west of the city of Hama, and is thought to be used as a base for Iranian forces and pro-Iranian militias. It has been repeatedly targeted in recent years in attacks widely attributed to Israel. It contains what is known as the Scientific Studies and Research Center, known as CER, C-E-R-S or S-S-R-C, which, according to Israel, is used by Iranian forces to manufacture precision surface-to-surface -surface missiles. Western officials have long associated this place with the manufacture of chemical arms. According to the U.S., sarin gas has been developed at the center, a charge denied by the Syrian authorities. There is no immediate comment on the strike from Israel, which rarely acknowledges individual operations in Syria. Now, this is huge because what they're doing, they're setting the stage. We talked about this yesterday of some type of invasion of Lebanon, of at least southern Lebanon, to uh, have a buffer zone between the, the border of Israel and the Lebanese border, which was supposed to happen uh, according to the UN resolution back in 2005-2006, uh, when the uh, war in Lebanon was, was over. And that never happened. Hezbollah is there with their tunnels, with their troops, and Israel needs to get rid of it, get rid of them once and for all. And as we've said, it, it is necessary for this to happen. 
because later, and we don't know how much later, when the Ezekiel 38-39 invasion does take place, the northern border of Israel is quiet. There will not be a threat uh, on the northern border because they're taken by surprise with this Russian invasion that does take place, Russian-led invasion. Now, that's not the case right now because they're armed to the teeth there in the northern border of Israel. So what we logically conclude is something must happen to get rid of Hezbollah. And that seems to be what's going on right now. So we'll keep you posted on all this. Now, this third story, I don't even know how to <clears throat> respond to it. Here we go. Hamas says, we're ready to implement a ceasefire with Israel without new conditions from any party. Hamas meets Egyptian and Qatari mediators, said it's ready to implement an immediate immediate based on ceasefire based on previous U.S. proposal without new conditions. They said this Wednesday evening that negotiators were iterated the group's readiness to do this immediate ceasefire. This is based on a U.S. proposal, according to a report from Reuters. In a statement, the group said the negotiating team, and it led by the uh, the, the different mediators there, are, are, are discussing all this. And a source with the knowledge of the issue told Axios that the Qatari and Egyptian mediators felt after meeting with Hamas and Doha it might be possible to present a new U.S. Qatari Egyptian bridging proposal to the parties next week. The U.S. has been pushing an outline for a ceasefire and hostage release deal that lamed up President uh, Joe Biden first laid out in May. But Hamas has continually, as we talked about, continually rejected every proposal that is presented to us. The Washington Post reported last week that the U.S. had been engaging with Egypt and Qatar <clears throat> to outline a final take it or leave it deal. However, the same newspaper reported on Saturday that the U.S. officials has announced that they're indefinitely postponing the presentation of the final deal. We reported that. According to the Post, the latest obstacle is Hamas's abrupt introduction of its demand that Israel release high-profile terrorists, even in exchange for humanitarian prisoners. And that's not going to that's not going to float at all. It's not going to work. What they're now saying is, if you want any of your you know, hostages back. You have to give us these murderers who have blood on their hands. And so basically, this is the um, this is where we're at right now. <clears throat> so bottom line is Hamas is hurting, as we have been reporting, but they're still making demands uh, 11 months after the fact. They feel they can do so because they're still holding these hostages, albeit fewer and fewer. And sooner or later, the myriad of tunnels under Gaza will eventually all be explored. Nowhere for Sinwar to hide. It seems Israel is getting closer and closer. But what we're seeing is the continuous fulfillment of the biblical scenario, the last days, step by step. And it is really something amazing to watch, isn't it? Falling into place, every single thing. All right. Uh, later today, again, we'll have another edition of Timeless Truths in the Bible, where we do look at is the Bible the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. So we'd like you to tune into that and the three previous ones if you get a chance. And our second edition of Breaking News, we've got a couple of really interesting stories about what's going on in Iran and China and how, again, threats from both of these places. All right, I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. Until next time, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless.